Okay, guys, this is my review for UFC um, UFC 126. Um, it was a great card. I really, really enjoyed this one. I mean, it had you know some amazing, some amazing bouts on it. So it's not really a surprise. Let's first start off with Miguel Torres versus um, 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 Antonio Bandolos. I'm sorry, I'm chopping up the guy's name, but the point is, is that. Uh, Miguel pretty much really didn't really show his full potential in this fight. I think it could have been the UFC jitters from being coming from the small stage to the big stage. But pretty much he couldn't really find his range also. His range was he he didn't really get it until late, late in the um into the into the rounds. So um that that could have been it also, but it just really wasn't a good showing for him. Um, and hopefully on his next bout that he wins, I mean, next bout that he goes, um, he'll show a better showing. Because he's really a dominant force within within that Bantamweight division. He really is, if you've seen him fight previously. And he ends up winning by unanimous decision against um, Antonio. So um, that that was a, a kind of a stale fight, but, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you get that. Um, then we move on to Jake Ellenberg versus Carlos Ricarha. Um, this fight was um, what was 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 decent. Also, um, it was very technical. The first round was a lot of ground fighting. Ricarha just pretty much, you know, dominated Ellenberg on the ground and pretty much held him there. Did a, you know all these submissions and whatnot? Easy transitioning for him. He pretty much, you know, he won that first round. Then Ellenberg comes out in the second and third one, pretty much using his uh, striking and saying, no, I'm not going to go on the ground. And the only time that he went onto the ground was when he got, uh, when it was like the last 20, 30 seconds of the round. And then from that point, he used it pretty much to secure that round. So he ends up winning by a split decision um, against Carlos Ricaja. But... You know, for some reason, the judge, some judge gave for Carlos for all three rounds, which I don't know how that happened, but, you know, never leave it in the judge's hands and they can do crazy crap like that. But the point is, is that um, Jake Ellenberg wins. But it's just kind of funny that, you know, he got pulled out of that fight with um, with Finch and, you know, they gave that to BJ Penn. But then he goes against Carlos, which is like a you know a, a bunch of tears down, and he still kind of struggled with them. So maybe he just needs to really build himself up rather than just automatically jumping up to that you know second tier in that division or that sec you know the second the, the person who who's second underneath GSP pretty much, and um, and going against him, you know just 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 my thoughts. But then we go into John Jones versus Ryan Bader. Very, very good fight. Very excited for it. John Jones came out and did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He pretty much kept Ryan Bader at bay with, you know, making Bader think that he was going to come in and do those unorthodox, you know, knees and whatnot, which he would have done if there was an opening. But it really kept Ryan Bader at bay. Ryan Bader was kind of, he was kind of stiff. You know, he's always stiff, but he was really, really stiff in this with throwing his right. Uh, he was really telegraphing his right overhand. It, you, you just knew what was coming. You know, John, John Jones at will moved away from his takedowns, took him down, took Ryan Bader down at will, um, got him down on the ground, pretty much threw elbows, you know, then came back in the second round, did pretty much did the same thing, you know, found his range of striking, kicks, and whatnot, took him down on the ground. And submitted him with the guillotine. He did a, a funny guillotine. It was not a funny guillotine, but with his, he did the the technique is right, but his positioning is kind of weird because normal a normal guy with normal length arms and whatnot wouldn't have been able to actually pull that off. But and it didn't look like he had, he could pull it off. But with his arms being so long, he could easily grab the inside and go for that choke and put pressure on uh, Ryan Bader's chest. So then they throw the bombshell out there that um, Rashad got hurt. I think it was, he got hurt. Um, he blew out his knee or something like that. So they want to replace John Jones in for Rashad. So it's going to be Rashad versus Shogun. And I think, don't quote me, but it's March 19th, I think, 
for their uh, for their fight coming up here for the title. And that should be an interesting, interesting fight. Um, I mean, throwing this guy right in the fire. And I think that Jones could beat Shogun. Um, I really do. I think he's like a younger version of Shogun with uh, with longer limbs. He's younger. He's bigger. Um, and they kind of have a similar style, you know, bits and pieces taken away from here from Shogun and whatnot. So I really think he has a really good chance at beating Shogun, and um, I can't wait to see that fight. Then we had um, Forrest Griffin versus Rich Franklin. Um, it just, you know, in this fight, it was just as simple as Forrest Griffin being bigger, the bigger guy, and pretty much beating up on Rich Franklin, who was a smaller guy. Um, Forrest Griffin pretty much just manhandled Rich Franklin as much as as much as he wanted to, threw him around. You know, got his back, kicking, punching. You know, obviously, Rich Franklin was a faster person, was a faster, you know, the faster out of the two. But it really didn't matter when he pretty much got smothered, you know, Forrest throwing the kicks, and then you being on the ground for the, you know, one, you know, for the whole first round. And uh, Forrest Griffin ended up winning a uh, unanimous decision, even though he hasn't fought in a, in a year, I believe. Um, so he did say the rust did affect him, but um, just against, you know, he was just a bigger guy, just really dominating um, Rich Franklin. Then we have um, Anderson Silva versus Vitor Belfort for the middleweight championship. And this guy, Anderson, man, he just, you know, just cut to the chase. He just, you know, they they pretty much moving around the ring for, you know, I don't know, what was it? Um three minutes, four minutes, something like that. And then eventually Anderson, you know, plays around with, with Vitor and pretty much, you know, does his normal, put his hand on, you know, brings his hands down and, you know, come on, punch me, you know, and I, Vitor really didn't fall for it, but then they, Vitor kind of got, got Anderson down, took him down and they popped back up. And then when they were in range, Anderson goes in and throws a front kick and catches him and knocks him out with a front kick. You know, just that simple. Just a front kick to the face, right on the chin, uh, because more than likely, um, uh, Vitor thought that he was going to get hit in the body, and then he got hit in the face. Because if you look at the replay, he was like looking right at it, like, oh, he's just going to hit me in the body. And then all of a sudden, boom, right on the chin, knockout. And this guy is just, you know, if you don't, you don't think that this guy is the best pound for pound, you got to be crazy. Um, I know GSP is right there, but this guy is just so dominant. You know, GSP is dominant with his wrestling, dominant with, you know, doing a lot of things. But he's just not like, he's not as dominant as, as Anderson. He really isn't. As far as the way that he knocks people out, the way that so he submits people. Uh, you know, he had a couple of bad fights, but for the most part, he is just really, he just really humiliates his opponents, you know, and GSP really doesn't do that. GSP beats guys, and, and, and in some fashion, he really, you know, dominates them, but Silva really dominates his guys and humiliates them. He makes them run out of the ring crying, he knocks them out with kicks that nobody ever, nobody ever uses. You know, front kicks. Who when when was the last time you seen someone get knocked out with a front kick? I haven't. You know, and this guy's so I'm just really ready to see GSP go ahead and take care of Shields and then it'd be GSP versus Anderson Silva for the super fight. And that would be great. I can't wait for it. So that's my review for um UFC one twenty six. Um as normal. If you like the video, please comment, rate and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.